on the day that the bar exam results are up, they will post them on the bar examination website and you will have to look through a list of names to see if your name is on it and that's how you find out whether or not you pass the bar. What's up you guys? It's your girl Angela with the Aspiring Boss. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. Today's video I'm going to be giving you guys the steps of how to become a lawyer from high school. I get a lot of questions from my high schoolers and college students about how do you even become a lawyer? What do I need to be doing? How do you get there? So I thought I would do a video explaining how to get there from high school to lawyer, okay? And there's a lot of information. A lot of these things can be broken down into one video. So I'm going to go through everything quite quickly, okay? This is a very broad informational video. So this is not meant to be, you know, extremely exhaustive with every detail and definition because that would be an hour long video and you guys will not watch that. So let's jump right in. So first of all, let's talk about what a lawyer is, right? A lawyer is a licensed person who advises and assists people with legal matters. Okay, that's very general, right? There are different types of paths you can go down, different types of law you can practice, and lots of things you can do as a licensed attorney, as a lawyer. So I've actually done a couple videos on different types of lawyers, different paths you can go down, different career paths you can go down if you have a law degree. Um, so I'll link them up here and you guys can check those out. Right now, we're just gonna talk about the process. All right, so if you're like me, you decided you wanted to be a lawyer well before, you know, it was time to go to law school or college. So I'm gonna talk about high school, what you can do in high school if you think you might wanna become a lawyer. So in high school, your focus should be getting into a good college, okay? Because that's gonna come in handy when it's time to get into law school. So getting into the best college you can, getting as much scholarship money for college as you can to limit student loan debt, and, and really just focusing on preparing yourself as a package to go to college. So what does that mean? Do everything you can to get the best grades you can in high school so you can get into a good college, okay? So in high school, you don't need to know what kind of lawyer you want to be. That that really doesn't need to be your focus. That's You're very, very early in the process. At this point, you don't even need to be sure you want to go to law school and be a lawyer. But if you think you might, these are the things that you should be focusing on getting those good grades, doing internships and extracurricular activities, things you can do that are more lawyer geared is maybe something like debate, really just anything that you're interested in that will look good on your college application. As far as internships, if you have an opportunity to maybe intern at some law firms or any sort of legal entities, that's cool, but it's not required. Again, you're very, very early in the stage. Your main focus should be getting into the best college you can. And like I said, trying to get as much scholarship money as you can so you don't have to take out student loans or lessening the burden of your parents to pay for your education. Okay, so and with that, you need to be focusing on the ACT or the SAT, and that is the college entrance exam. Ideally, you should start thinking about that your junior year. That way you kind of have scores, that way you kind of know what your options are as far as college. Your SAT or your ACT score, along with your GPA, is gonna determine what kind of college you can get into. So focus on those grades and focus on preparing yourself to go to college. Again, you don't have to know for sure if you want to be a lawyer. You don't have to know what you want to be. You just need to get into the best college you can that will allow you to get into the best law school you can later. Okay, so now we get to college. Now you're in college. What should you be focusing on? Similar to high school, you should be focusing on your grades. GPA is a huge determining factor into what law school you're going to get in. Focus on your grades, get the best grades you can. From day one, your grades should be a focal point. College is all about experiences, having fun, trying new things, meeting new people, and those are all important. But do not lose sight of why you are there. You're there to get a great education so you can have you know, whatever career you want. And particularly, if you wanna be a lawyer, you have to go to college, you have to graduate from college, so you can get into law school. Much like high school, your college experience should be preparing you to present yourself as a package to law school, right? You're gonna present an application to law school and they're gonna look at certain things. So you should also be focusing on extracurriculars that are gonna look good on your law school application. So again, if you wanna gear more towards law school and being a lawyer, debate, pre-law societies such as Phi Alpha Delta, uh, internship with law firms, the government, any sort of legal entities that you can find, community service. Uh, for example, I've had a few of you guys reach out and say you wanted to be you know, someone who helps domestic violence survivors. So maybe volunteering at shelters or for other entities that help survivors of domestic violence. That way, the things you've done, your experiences, 
back up what you say that you want in that application. And don't take this to mean that you need to know what type of lawyer you want to be um, when you're in college before you go to law school. You don't. Most people don't figure it out until they're in law school, until they just figure out what job they're able to get after law school. So that's just for my people who feel like they already know or they're passionate about it and they want to say something about that in their law school application. That's a good tip. Another thing you should be doing is exploring law schools in the legal field. Make sure it's what you want to do. Law school is a huge commitment and a legal career is a very demanding career. So you want to make sure it's actually what you want to do before you make that commitment. And so watching videos like this, watching videos on YouTube, uh, reaching out to people on LinkedIn for informational interviews, reaching out to any lawyers you know about what their experience is, what types of law there are, and just understanding what you are possibly getting yourself into. Once you're sure about wanting to go to law school and be a lawyer, you should be exploring law schools, okay? So you should be knowing what the top law schools are, uh, what the mid law schools, what the lower law schools are, what the requirements are, what you should be aiming for. It's always good to have a goal in mind so you can aim for something. So explore those law schools, learn all you can, soak up all the information you can about law school and the legal field so you're fully aware and you know how to set goals for yourself. Another thing that you'll need to do is take the LSAT and that's a law school admissions test. It's similar to the ACT or the SAT, but it's for your admission to law school. Your LSAT score is extremely important to getting into law school. Your LSAT score and your grades are the main two determining factors that will determine what school you get into. Okay, so if you know you want to go to a top school, you need to be looking at those schools requirements to see what grades and what LSAT score you should be aiming for. If you know you want to go to a particular school, like for myself, I feel like if I went back, if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably go to an HBCU because I didn't get to do that as an undergrad. And I just think that would have been a really cool experience. Okay, well, I would have been looking at schools like Howard. And so what I would have done is been looking, I know I want to go to HBCU. Here are the HBCUs. Here are the grades each one's require. Here's the average grades that you need to get into these schools. Here's the average LSAT score that you need to get into these schools. So knowing and exploring those schools will allow you to make goals for yourself or grades as well as the LSAT. And the LSAT is a beast, you guys. It's just not an intuitive test. Much like any standardized test, you have to prep for it. And my advice to anybody would be to take an LSAT prep course. Now there's a bunch of courses out there and the prices range, right? It's an investment. Um, that's something I would talk to your parents about or if you have a job that was money I would put aside to invest in an LSAT prep course because your LSAT score will help determine what kind of law school you can get into. And as some of you may not know, law school can be very competitive and the better law school you go to, they say the better job prospects you have. Now that is not to say that you have to go to a top law school or you can't become a lawyer or you won't get a good job, but your odds are a lot better. Obviously, if you're watching this and you haven't went to law school or you're still in college, well, why not try to get into the best law school you can? So I'm not bashing lower tier law schools or anything like that or saying that you must only go to a top law school. I am a person who did not go to a top law school. What I'm saying is, in my opinion, your goal should be to go to the best school that you can. Okay, so now you're either a junior or a senior in college, right? You've taken the LSAT, you got some grades under your belt, you got some experience under your belt, you know, extracurriculars, you're involved, you're ready to apply to law school. So now you have to go through the law school application process. And again, the law school application process is very nuanced and deserves a video on its own, but you will submit an application. You will likely submit a personal statement. You will likely submit a resume along with the fees that it takes to apply to law school. And there are all sorts of waivers and things like that that I won't get into, but yes, your law school application, then you're putting out law school applications to law schools and people usually do that either their second semester of their junior year or the first semester of their senior year because at that point you have you know a good amount's worth of classes to go into your gpa that they can analyze as well as you've already taken the lsat and have hopefully gotten a decent score um, or a score that you're comfortable with to apply to law school on that note you should absolutely be applying to scholarships as well as you know applying to those law schools one of my biggest pieces of advice is to try to limit as much debt that you get into for school as you can whether that be through academic scholarships directly with the law school that you go to or the college that you go to or you know just one-off scholarship there's so many scholarships out here guys you just have to look for them just google them but apply for as many scholarships as you can you will thank yourself later when you're graduated from law school and a lawyer and making good money and you don't have to give a good chunk of that money away to pay off your student loans trust me okay so now we're in law school right you've applied got in you know 
found your housing, moved to wherever you need to move, and you're starting your first year of law school, okay? For most people, law school is three years and you go full-time. There are part-time options, but most people go full-time. So you have your 1L, 2L, and 3L year, okay? Most law schools will not allow you to work the first year because you need to get acclimated to law school because it's a lot different from undergrad it's a lot more demanding and most law schools feel you're setting yourself up for failure by trying to work and go to law school your first year once you get past your first year a lot of people will work during you know the school semesters but the most important time for law school jobs and internships in my opinion is the summer okay the summer is huge for law students you will go through a process called oci which stands for on-campus interviews you will interview with law firms government jobs entities looking for legal interns to try to secure internships associateships and externship positions in order to get legal experience and this is very important for many reasons depending on the school you go to many of like the top firms and entities will come to the school and interview you guys and if you have the right grades and experiences and resume you will likely have the opportunity to interview with some of these entities however if you don't get the chance to participate in on-campus interviews there are all sorts of things you can do you can do resume drops you can look on websites for legal internships your school's career counselor should have access to all sorts of websites sites that have legal jobs so you will go for these legal jobs to try to get experience some people are lucky enough to get some of these internships at law firms their 1l year but the most important year is your 2l year because for some of these jobs you will literally go through the job and at the end of the summer you will have the opportunity to get an offer of full-time employment upon graduation and passing the bar which is amazing so in law school your focus should primarily be getting a legal experience you know through internships and summer associate programs you should be making the best grades you can because again grades matter if you guys have not noticed grades and accolades matter in the legal field the better you do the more opportunities you have again this does not mean that if you don't have top tier grades that you cannot be successful the better grades and accolades you have the more opportunities you have so that is why i personally think grades should be probably your main focus in law school. Another thing you should be focused on in law school is networking and being involved in things, okay? There are so many things that you can be involved in in law school. There's tons of legal organizations you can join. You can join Law Review, which is a legal journal. You can do mock trial or moot court, which gives you those traditional litigation type experiences and they look good on your resume. You can do other journals. Law Review is kind of the most prestigious journal, but there's other journals where you can write briefs, research, do all those types of things. You can do clinics. Like for example, when I was in law school, I did a human trafficking clinic where I helped victims of human trafficking seek asylum here in the US. And it was an amazing experience. If you're interested in transactional work, that gives you exposure to more transactional type of work such as drafting contracts negotiating contracts because that is not as common in law school law school is more based on litigation where you're reading cases and writing briefs so there's a ton of things you can do to get involved and the more involved you are the better your resume and the better your resume the better your grades the better your experience the better opportunities you have for jobs and that's what you're going to law school for most people are going to law school to get a job as a lawyer to get a job or to start your own firm so all those things will help you jumpstart your legal career all right so that's law school so now you've graduated from law school you're done you're a lawyer right no so once you graduate from law school, there's a series of things you have to do in order to be a licensed attorney in the state you're in. And the requirements vary state by state. But in every state, you have to pass what they call the bar exam. The bar exam is a very intense exam that you need to pass in order to become licensed. So after you graduate from law school, literally like a week or less, after you graduate, you start preparing for the bar exam and it's usually administered about two months after you graduate. In addition to the bar exam, you also have to submit an application to be admitted to the bar and they look at what they call the fitness and character. So you have to tell them anything that, you know, kind of goes against your moral character to make sure that you are fit to be a lawyer because lawyers are held to a higher standard. So if you got a ticket, you have to tell them. I, I remember I got a curfew ticket back in high school because I used to party and I had to tell the bar exam about my high school curfew ticket from like junior year of high school. Like they want to know everything. If you ever been arrested, if you ever got a ticket, anything kind of bad, you have to tell them about. And then you answer a series of questions to make sure you are fit 
enough to be an attorney. Another test that you have to take, which is much easier and less intense, and it's just a multiple choice. I took it in law school instead of waiting till I graduated, but it's called the MPRE. It stands for Multi-State Professional Responsibility Examination. And like I said, it's way less intense. Just testing your knowledge of the professional code of conduct that lawyers must adhere to. So now you've taken your bar exam, you submitted your application, you know, to be admitted to the bar, and you're just waiting on your bar exam results. I mean, it can take a while. Like, for example, when I first took my first bar exam, I took it in July, I didn't get my results to November. If you're lucky, you start your job around September. Some people start, you know, even earlier than that. So you are allowed to work before getting your bar exam results. So if you're lucky, you start your job or you start looking for a job, okay? And this is where all that hard work that you did in law school comes in handy. So you start your job and you wait for your bar exam results to come back. On the day that the bar exam results are up, they will post them on the bar examination website and you will have to look through a list of names to see if your name is on it and that's how you find out whether or not you pass the bar they will later send like a direct you know letter or email with your score and everything else but if you want to know right away you have to look on the list and i will tell you that is one of the most scariest nervous moments i've ever had in my life and i've done it twice um just because i took two bar exams luckily i passed them the first time in each but man it's a crazy feeling but you look on that is how you find out if you pass if you pass the bar exam and your character and fitness test came back okay then you get sworn in and you'll get sworn in by a judge and it just depends some people will want to get sworn in by a judge they know you know a family friend judge some people's jobs will set up a swearing in ceremony i know for my first job they had an alumni judge come and they, they did a special ceremony for us at our job and the second time i passed the bar we were able to go to the Capitol and I got sworn in by the Missouri Supreme Court judges. So it's a really, really cool experience. It's okay, so I've now went through how to become a lawyer from high school all the way to getting sworn in and becoming a licensed attorney. I really, really hope this answers a lot of your questions, especially for you younger people who are in high school and college and really, really want to know a bit more information about how the whole process works. If you have any questions, let me know them in the comments. If you want me to do a specific video on certain process, like the bar exam application process or the law school application process, let me know. If you haven't yet liked this video, go ahead and give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is on and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.